Welcome back to the Newbie Railroad. Um, today, on this week's episode, two, two items mainly. Uh, one is we're going to finish uh, connecting all uh, four more of my uh, turnouts to uh, DCC controller chips. I'll show you how I'm doing that using a Bachman device. And then we're going to open a Athern uh, diesel locomotive and try it out. And I definitely liked the Athern. I like, I like the tsunami sound they have. I... Um, Disappointed in the in the in one item in the in the labeling, and I'm having a little trouble with one of the one of the uh, connectors. So I'll I'll do an update on that later. So enjoy. So I've added a, uh, a siding here. This was just a single track a while ago, and I put in couple more switches and I made this siding. I'm thinking now that maybe where the greenery elevator there is where maybe I'll put a, a reverse a reversing T in right there and use this siding track for that. But that's for another day. Um, so I did that and then I got some of these things. Uh, these are from uh, Bachman. They, uh, they were out of stock at uh, Model Train stuff has them cheaper than the Bachman website, but uh, they also I've got like some, <laughs> they're out of them again now. But I've got four of these, and what these are for is these are supposed to be, and I haven't done it yet, but we'll see. It's supposed to be a direct plug into <coughs> the regular Bachman DC turnouts. So this 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 DC cable here plugs into this, and what this has in it is a DCC chip. That's programmable, um, so I can so I can program all my switches. I've got four. I've got four programmed now. I'll have four more, and then I'll probably still have a couple more to do, um, depending on what happens with uh, where I where I end up putting the other reversing loop. But uh, I'll put that somewhere. Okay, so this is the. Uh, Easy Command DCC. Uh, I ordered several of these, as I previously said. Um, it's a DCC control box with turnout decoder, and I'll show what's in here in a minute. Um, on the back, it's just got some really, really brief instructions. Um, these are basically a direct uh, turn connection then to the uh, to the regular uh, Easy Switch, Easy uh, Command systems that have an analog switch basically. So when you open the package, it's got a it's got a cable. This is a power cable and each one of these has one, but I'll show here in a minute. If you daisy chain them together, you don't need this that many. So you'll have extra power cables. So in there there's an instruction sheet which basically says this is how to set it up with the easy track system. Uh, this is how you set it up if you have a different kind of track. Um, and then this goes through the instructions if you have uh, the, the easy command um, controller, which I have disconnected. I don't, I don't have it set up anymore. I'm not using that anymore. But if you are using it, it's got instructions for that. Pretty straightforward. Um, although you can only have, with the original uh, Bachman easy command controller, you can only have like nine switches. So um, It says that up to up to eight one of these things can control up to eight um, eight uh, switches. You can chain eight switches together. And I suspect that's a power thing, or or maybe they're referring to just the the Bachman system. I'm not sure, but it does say that. Uh, it tells how to use it manually. Um, tells how to do a factory reset, uh, basically, and then it tells um, how to set it up with other DCC systems. So. Um, basically, <coughs> let's open this up here. What what it's got in here, then, is the instruction sheet that I just looked at. It's got a little. Uh, this must be a peel and stick, uh, where you can label the turnout turnout numbers. Um, it's got one of those with each of the boxes, so I've got I have several of those. Um, here's the this is the power cable. It's a three three prong um, cable that connects directly to the um, 
power strip on the on the Bachman um, controller. So basically, uh, well, yeah, over here. Well, I'll show you in a minute. And then this is the unit. And so basically, the unit's got room for three plugs on the outside. So it's got it's got a DCC power in, which is where you get the power from the from the track or from the neighboring unit. It's got a, a connection here to the turnout. And those are the green cables that come from the turnouts. And that's got a power out where you can chain these things together. And it's got a switch on the top here, which you use to set the switch into into programming mode. So let me move the camera over here for a second. So basically, then this is the uh, this is the the power. This is the re-railer that's got where the power comes into the system, and then you can you can tap into it for power for the for these little guys. And then this is where you can just DC chain these things together if you light it up right. Mm -hmm. So, and um, and then the green the green cable that comes from this from here gets plugged into each one of these. So each one of these will control one of the turnouts. And I've already programmed a couple of them. They work quite well. Um, I also figured it out on my uh, Digitrax unit. Maybe I'll go through that later if we need to. But <clears throat> I figured out how to uh, go in and change the setting so that. When I first turned my other ones on, they defaulted. They were in a closed. They were closed. Um, so basically, what that means is that a train comes in, it goes straight, goes straight through the switch, closed. And then, then, then thrown is where the train would 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 take the alternate route. And the other ones I had all were correct. This one was backwards. Um, but I figured out how to change it so that it knows my uh, this tracks knows <coughs> that the train is, is, is uh, it's um, whether it's closed or thrown so it's correct. So when you're going to change a switch on the control box, it tells you that the switch is either closed or open, closed or thrown. And so you want to make sure that is in fact correct because if you believe it and it's the opposite, then you could have a derailment. So all right. So I like these. I have four of these uh, boxes linked daisy chained together, and they are operating four of my switches. Now that I have um, all of my switches, I only have uh, currently have two switches on the line that are still manual, or um, but all the rest are. So I've started taking it. I need to go online and look at um, see if there's some hip tips and hints for drawing a uh, diagram like they use for like most subway systems and stuff in cities and different things like that. But I took a stab at it and I put little circles here where the switches are. I labeled the main items and I numbered my switches so I can remember where they are. Um, so that's a good start. Okay, so the little switcher's job is done for the day. So I'm going to unhook him, maybe. I should get like a little pin or something to touch the hook with. To unhook. There, it's disconnected. And we'll drive him out of the way and maybe we'll take him over to the siding. His day is done.
Let's do an unboxing of a new loco. This is my second uh, diesel locomotive, and then we'll use it to finish the day's operations. Um, this is my very first Atherin uh, loco. It says Atherin Genesis. Um, comes in a very shiny box. It says it's Atherin 75th anniversary. Premium trains. Okay, on the end of the box, <coughs> So it has Tsunami 2, that's the sound, Atherin G, A -A -T -H -G 19526 with sound. It should be in the Western Pacific livery. They, uh, they didn't have a uh, uh, Northern Pacific or a Great Northern, so I went ahead and went with Western Pacific, which is a little bit south of where I am pretending to operate, but oh well. Um, I've got a fictitious... I'm not doing a pure prototype anyway. It's totally fictitious. Um, so that's what it says. Uh, Western Pacific, uh, it's an FP7 freight. When FP7 is very similar to the local that I looked at um, yesterday. It's the same, uh, last week, the same, uh, the same life-size <laughs> local. Um, so I'm not, I probably won't do a history on these because I just did a history last time. But... Um, we can compare how the the tsunami sounds compared to uh, what uh, Broadway Limited did. So let's go ahead and open up the box. Okay, and there's some paperwork here. This is probably the limited warranty card. Um, let's see what this is. This is some fine print. This must be warnings or something. Let's see. Horizon Hobby, one year limited warranty. This is more warranty stuff. Okay. Put that there. And then this is a exploded diagram of the unit. Um, FP series diesel road locomotive. And the black back is blank. But it's got basically the exploded diagram. Okay, let's set that aside. Then we've got an ad for Atherin. Sign up for their news. And then we have probably the thing that I was looking for. The operator's manual and the sound guide. Let's take a look at how it goes. As close to real as it gets. All right, so what's in here? <clears throat> it starts off with handling, handling and maintenance. Um, lubrication, replacement parts, care and cleaning. And then uh, DC and sound. So apparently you could operate this under DC if you wanted to. Um, exp explains how to do that. I won't be using that because I'll be doing DCC. Uh, DCC and sound. Here's the uh, the function table. You've got the regular F0 is headlight, F1 is bell, F2 is horn, short horn. If I look down the list here, see if there's anything. F8 is mute. Uh, it doesn't say. I wonder where the I wonder if there's a volume. Well, we'll find out if there's a volume control or not. Um, they have all aboard uh, coach doors, F23, if you're doing passengers. Um, so there's, it has a, a wide range of the typical sounds that you would use. Uh, emergency stop brings on the red emergency Mars light if equipped. Okay. Um, then it's basically got the instructions for operating with DCC, uh, programming and reading CVs. So you can change, and it's got, it's got here again. It's got uh, basically the values. Um, let's see, what is this? Horn. Oh, I see. You could, you can use, you can change the CV value of 120 to change the horn that it's got. Ooh. And the bell also for uh, CV what? CV 122. Okay. So it's got it's got some interesting stuff there on options for that. Let's just go ahead and we'll, I'm not going to read through all of this, but uh, you can, but anyway, it's got information on which CVs you want to change for different optional things. Uh, primary CVs, motor control. It's got it's got the CVs broken out here in the, in various groupings. CV is control variable, which you can change with your 
your controller box. Oh, it's got lots and lots and lots of them. So it's got quite a bit of information. Warranty, FCC compliance, and that's it. All right. So now, let's see if we can get this thing out of here. This is the first time I've opened it. I have no idea what it looks like. It comes with, uh, around, the, around the, your basic plastic shell, it's got... Um, it's got uh, some nice foam in the box, and uh, I try help holding it upside down. And oh, one other thing it said on the box, it said it was painted for grime or something, which I assume is primed. So apparently that means that if you wanted to weather this, it's already primed, I guess is what that means. I probably won't weather it because I have the artistic ability of he tries to think of something that doesn't have any artistic ability. Any animal I mentioned, I'd be insulting that animal probably. Um, okay, a little piece of foam there. Okay, so here's the here's the block. Let's take it out of here. Okay, and then it has this really nice soft foam. And it's stuck on one spot there. There it's loose. Okay, let's set that aside. Okay, it's quite heavy. It has some holders here for the trucks apparently. One of them appeared to be out of position. Maybe I bumped it. But it's quite heavy. And I will, again, as usual, I'll take some pictures of it and see if we can't um, can't take a look at what we got here. Um, I don't see any... any... Um, any parts bags or anything. And so I guess that's about it. All right, we'll get it up on the track here in a minute and take a good look at it. One reason I do the pictures is because that way you can decide for yourself about the level of detail on these things because I'm not a uh, local expert, I'm a newbie. And so I wouldn't know if a particular part was right or wrong for a particular model. But I did want to mention a couple of things on this one. Um, it has some nice detail. I mean, it's got fans on top. It's got uh, separately fitted uh, wiper blades on the front. I can't tell if there's any cab detail, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's cab lighting. Um, I don't think there's anybody in there. Um, but I, would, I did want to mention that. Other than that, you know, this, this looks good. Um, the, everything else looks pretty decent. Um, the back door has some pretty good... Um, pretty good detail but it doesn't have the uh, external piece of plastic for the fitting that would be normal um, on these units uh, to show like like the Broadway Limited had. Um, this must be a light there which the Broadway Limited didn't have a light there I don't think. So that's interesting. This might be a slightly different you know layout um, on the Western Pacific than the uh, Northern Pacific so it could be that they've modeled things like that. It's got it's got a horn up here on top that's uh, silver. It's pro I can't tell if it's metal or plastic, but it looks pretty good. Um, there's some more horns up here, which are black, and they look kind of plasticky, but, you know, they're okay. Um, what else have we got that I can mention? Let's look underneath. Oh, I didn't take a picture underneath. Um, we've got some detail down here. Which is kind of, I always like to see that. It's kind of, I mean, not that it's a big deal because you know you're not looking at the bottom of your train anyway. But I do like to see some some little bit of realism down here. There's a, there's a screw there, which obviously there's some screws here, which are obviously the ones you have to take off if you want to take the body off. There looks like there's one, two, three or four. Looks like um, screws probably to get the body off. I could look at the diagram. Hopefully, I won't have to take the body off. Okay, let's see if we can program this thing. Um, so what I've got is I've got the, the loco set up on my programming track, and which is connected to the Zephyr. And in the Zephyr, I go into the main menu, and I type in option three. No, I'm sorry, option one, which is a quick decoder setup. I'm going to tell it, I'm going to hit, uh, I've, already got, I've already typed in eight, which tells it to use 84. And 84 is a long address because I'm going to use... Um, 
I'm going to use a uh, a, um, a th three digit code for the local instead of the two digit. So 80 a log address, and I'm going to type it and I'm going to hit C for data. And I'm going to type in, uh, I think it's 91915 is the unit on the number on the side of the loco. So we'll hit 915 and then we'll type in write. And it thinks it's doing it. CV task completed okay. All right, so now I'm going to exit out of that. So this loco should be unit number 915. Let's get it up. I'm sorry for the bouncing around because I'm going to be flipping back and forth here. But I'm going to go. It, 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 I'm not even running the loco, but it's starting it. So you, can, you can hear it. It's starting its startup sequence with the diesel engine. So if I hit loco button and tell it I want 915, hit loco again, that should be the unit. So if I hit zero, And nothing happens. Let's hit uh, function one. Okay, there's the bell. Oh, one was zero was light, so it probably won't come on until the unit's moving. There should be a whistle. Cool. Okay. All right, I'm gonna shut this down. Let's let's do a little. I'll, I'll put it back on a instead of bouncing around here, holding hand holding this for you. I'll uh, put it back on the. It does have the rear light on, which of course you can't see. Let's try to back it up here. And it's going forward. Okay, that's interesting. I've never had that happen with a uh, ECC local before. I'm not sure why it's doing it, but it's got the forward and reverse. Huh. I do like the sound better. The the volume is uh, more typical of what you'd ex you know what, what fits in my room better than than the uh, Okay, it was user error. So apparently what I had done is I had must have accidentally programmed a CV so uh, to make it go backwards and forwards incorrectly. So I uh, I uh, went in in the instructions and found how to reset the CVs to the factory default, and then I reprogrammed just the uh, just the um, um, what do I want to say just the one for the for the ID number of the unit. So. Um, I'm going to run it in before I do anything else and, and, and see if I can get it to work correctly. And it, So far, it's working now. And so I'm going to end this here for now. And we'll just take it up all, because uh, I've already gone way over my what I normally do for a length of time. So we'll s hopefully we'll see you next time on the Newbie Railroad. Just a quick ending note. I've been running it now in both directions to run it in. And it's going around my layout without without stuttering or derailing. That's running at about 40% speed right there. So just as a...